Hey everybody, this is Chad Jordan uh, from Sport Clips. This is another edition of our Hall of Fame podcast. And you can probably hear, uh, or, or if you see us um, on YouTube, hi there, uh, you can probably hear the excitement in my voice because I didn't know we we're going to be recording this podcast today. It just so happened we were both in the same place at the same time, and I've been clamoring for this young lady to be on the podcast uh, all year long. So super excited for what we're going to learn today about her, from her. Uh, she is literally one of the legends and the rock stars at Sport Clips. So without further ado, she's already, you can't see this um, unless you're watching on YouTube. She's already blushing. <laughs> but um, if, why don't you tell me, um, obviously your full name, your role at Sport Clips, and I don't know, uh, the biggest thing you've done this year. Give me those three to start. Okay, my name is Brittany Fitzgerald. Um, I am an area coach with North Texas, and I'm also part of the artistic team. And I think the biggest thing I did this year was I kind of got up in front of thousands of people mm -hmm. and shared with them all my deepest, darkest secrets. That's right, and, so. it, was, and it was phenomenal. Um, wait, did you get married this year? I did. Okay, oh, let's, no. let's hold on. <laughs> Let me hit the stop. I'm not going to hit the stop button because I know you were thinking work related, and I didn't. I didn't qualify it, but we'll get we'll get back to that. Okay. Later, so, um, but no, you did ever ever since. You got up on, and do you remember we had a conversation before? Yes. Do you remember what I told you? Um, if not, I'm going to remind you. It was. Because you were, you were a little nervous, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, and uh, and I said, do you remember what I said? I'm putting you on the spot. I remember you saying you got this, yes. but everything else so here's, was a blur. <laughs> here's what I, here's the advice that I like to give to people. And so this will be, it was, yeah, hopefully it, it helped you in some capacity, but for anybody getting up in front of um, thousands of people, especially your peers, right? People that they're most of the ones in the crowd were stylists that want, you know, or obviously managers and all that, not yet coaches. But um, what I told you was, hey, everyone is rooting for you. you like they want, right? right? Yes. They want, they're, no one is hoping you, you suck. No one's hoping that you mess up. We all want you to do well. So take that energy and just use that. And if you get to a point, where you kind of freeze up or whatever, just remember, we're pulling for you. We're rooting for you. And I, I, obviously you didn't need it because you, you, you never messed up. You went right through it. You've told it passionately, which we'll get to, uh, to that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, so I was so floored by everything you did and, and talked through and, and, and you've been through in your career and, and life. So we want to unpack a little bit of that today because Many of our listeners or our viewers were not at Huddle, so they they didn't get uh, that opportunity. So let's let's go a little. Let's go quickly into uh, you're now on the artistic team, yes. right? You've been there how long? Uh, so this is 2020. Will be my third year. Okay, third of four, right? That's mm -hmm. what kind of so you renewed or uh, yeah. re-upped or whatever. Okay, so you've gone all over. Give me some of the spots, uh, destinations that you've gone to. Well, I went to Orlando. Um, well, what was it? What was there? It was premiere. Okay. Uh, that was a great show. People dress very interesting mm -hmm. at these huge shows, especially in Orlando. The the attendees or the actual uh, the platform attendees. artists. Okay. It's it's we weren't the hot topic mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that was very interesting. Loved it. Um, so I did go to Chicago as well, but that was actually for a. Um, Facebook Live with American Crew. That oh, wow. was an awesome opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I was, I literally flew in. It was dark. I got up the next morning, did the podcast at nine o'clock, and got on my plane at like one o'clock. Oh my gosh. So you didn't even get to taste Chicago I saw it. style it looked pizza beautiful, or, but yeah. No. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was great. What though. a shame. I was in <laughs> Chicago. Um, okay. And uh, what, I, I, I just, I'm so, uh, in awe of the artistic team, what you guys do, seeing you perform, obviously at Huddle, but the travel and all that kind of stuff. Give me some, what are some of the highlights, the things that you love the most about the experience so far? I mean, definitely working with other coaches and these amazing people. They're so talented and they have so much, so many amazing things to share with me and we share with each other and I get a lot from the trainings and just being around those people. They just really uplift you and keep everything very positive. Uh, but also being able to go out and share how much we love sport clips mm -hmm. and talking to future professionals and talking to stylists and telling them 
why we're here and what we've done and hopefully giving them the motivation to go out and do the same thing. It's just, it's really powerful. It makes you really feel good. And um, you're also our ambassador role um, as well? Lead ambassador. Okay, so you're lead ambassador. Um, in fact, that's why you're, we're in the same place yeah. at the same time. I happen to be, we're in Georgetown, Texas right now, our headquarters, and, and you're here. So can you tell me quickly about what the ambassador program is for anybody that might be listening that isn't familiar, doesn't have it in their area, what, what's the ambassador program? Yeah, absolutely, so we have a team of stylists, managers, who are our ambassadors and they're brand ambassadors for our market. So they go out to the different beauty schools and they talk about sport clips and share education and brand awareness to let future professionals know who we are and what we're about so they can come apply. Um, can you uh, walk me through some of your, I don't know, what's the, the highlight of an ambassador moment that you've had either in a beauty school or someone that's gotten hired from doing that and now at a sport clips that you check in on or well i think the highlight of the ambassador team for me was two of my ambassadors they are stylists mm -hmm. and we won a contest for the most student look entries in the market Wow. So our two stylists got to attend the National Huddle in Vegas oh, awesome. this year, and okay. it was it was awesome. Yeah. They had such a great time, and it was something that really stuck out in their lives, and I think it will keep them with sport clips because yep. they got to experience that, and that was just, it was an amazing moment for me as a lead. Well, and I mean, the irony, they got to come the year you're the keynote speaker. Yeah, that was cool. So, uh, <laughs> all right, let's 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 go through, and, and we'll, you know, we'll talk about wedding and all this other work-life balance and stuff but I do want to for those that are tuning in and they might have missed your presentation or they're hungering for more can you kind of walk me through without and we don't have the slides and the pictures of your hometown <laughs> and um, all of that kind of stuff but can you kind of just walk me through a little bit of your background and um, some challenges and things that you've overcome yeah absolutely so I am from a very small town, mm -hmm. uh, Chattanooga, Oklahoma. I would love to say shout out, but I don't think anybody <laughs> is still lives there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, the population of that town to this day is 400 people. Yeah. So being there, it was very much looking around and thinking that there wasn't much place to go. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of the family and friends that I knew had been in that town. They were born in that town. They grew up in that town. These are all like farmers yes, and ag. Yes, okay. they had yeah. kids in that town. Yeah. They had grandkids in that town and they're just doing the same things. Mm -hmm. And it was a little scary for me because I really had high ambitions and I wanted to travel and I wanted to do great things. Um, so that was kind of my first challenge. And I chose cosmetology for no other reason than if I can't make it far, at least I'll do something that will be fun mm -hmm. and that I'll enjoy doing. How, how, why cosmetology? Had you kind of discovered that at an early age as a kid? You, you know, you you have brothers and sisters. You cut their I hair. Don't. Like what, what? So what? What drew you to it? I'll be honest. I took a class my senior year, and it okay. was supposed to be senior hour. We're gonna talk to you about colleges and different opportunities and. We started going into colleges and talking about the different um, opportunities there, and I just wasn't feeling like any of it was going to be for me. Mm -hmm. And then we went to a tech school, and they actually had a cosmetology program, and I immediately said, I think this could be fun. I mm -hmm. think I want to do this. And I went to my teacher, and I kind of said this was something I was interested in. And it wasn't received very well because, really? yeah, it wasn't. Um, I think... Cosmetology sometimes has uh, a reputation of being a stepping stone to another career. Mm. And so it was kind of like, okay, well, you can go do that for a while and then you'll go find what you're really going to do. Yeah. And I don't like it when people tell me I can't do something. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, that okay, so I'm going to be a cosmetologist yeah. and this is going to be my career. And now Not just my, be one. You yeah. wanted to be a great one, yes. right? Yeah. And uh, so I, I immediately joined this industry with passion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was very ambitious with what I could do. But um, after I started cosmetology school. No, it's not in Chattanooga. Where no, is No, it's in Lawton, Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, it's about 30 miles north mm -hmm. of Chattanooga. Um, but after I started school, I have a disorder called tremors, and okay. it makes my hands shake, and it kind of makes my body shake, especially if I'm nervous or, mm -hmm. you know, um, excited. And um, so when I started cosmetology school, I started cutting hair, right. and I started doing really all these things with my hands. Yeah. 
And I, it was one of those things where when I realized it was such a problem, I was so worried. Had you known before I, that you had this syndrome or whatever? I did. It just yeah. didn't affect me. Okay. It was kind of like, oh, that's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really started to affect me in school. And I just kind of, I got really upset because I thought, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. And this may be the end of it. Mm -hmm. This may ruin my whole idea of what I'm going to do with my life. And... I had a couple people that were kind of like, yeah, maybe you should go do oh something my. else mm -hmm. and maybe this isn't going to be right for you. And I just kind of decided that there's only one way to get good at something and it's to practice. And I could overcome this with practice and mm -hmm. I could get over my fears, which would calm down the nervousness. It would calm down the shaking and I would learn how to control it. And over time I did. So. And had this been... Uh like you had doctors or somebody kind of advising you like here's how to do here's how to combat it and, and or had you done some research on your own how did you know to i uh i went to the emergency room because i thought i was having a heart attack mm -hmm. and when i got there i was shaking i mean it was uncontrollably and the nurse came in and said something's really wrong with her and the doctor said no she just has tremors and that was actually the first time i had heard it uh -huh. And I said, is that what's happening to me uh -huh. right now? Because I didn't know what it was. And they were like, no, you're having a panic attack. You're not having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. You're having a panic attack. But you also have tremors, which is going to be worse when you're in these moments. And uh, Do you immediately web MD that on yes, your phone? Yes, absolutely. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, like, okay, okay uh -huh. so I'm dying? Uh -huh. Google. Right. And uh, No, but I looked it up, and there honestly wasn't a whole lot that you could do um, about it. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of just... And this was before cosmetology school. So I basically was like, oh, that's fine. I'll just live with it and try not to have panic attacks. Right. Like, yeah, you know, yeah uh, like they're controllable. Yeah, you know, I mean. yeah. so uh, I didn't really have a lot of direction on mm -hmm. what to do. So I just kind of dealt with it. And Okay, so now you've, you've been uh, diagnosed, let's, for lack of a better term, let's mm -hmm. call it that. Now you've experienced it. You've kind of coached yourself through the first initial ones, at what point do you realize, okay, uh, this practice, this what I'm doing is, is going to be enough for me to be able to kind of compensate and overcome uh, this physical challenge that I have? Did you realize right away or was it going to take some time? It took some time, yeah. um, but I wasn't going to give up, I think was the big thing. I just... I, I had too many people telling me I couldn't do it mm -hmm. for me to let that be true. And so I just kept trying and trying and trying. I did feel very uncomfortable, especially when people were watching me, like my instructors, oh, okay. they come over and they, they just kind of stare at me like, mm -hmm. you know, your clients aren't going to trust you if you're shaking all over their head. I mean, how, how bad, I mean, uh, forgive me. How bad is the sh was the shaking? I mean, I don't want to say is because I think you've overcome it, but I, it's still there. Okay. But I'm confident now mm -hmm. in my ability as a stylist. When I wasn't confident and I had those intense nerves, it was bad. Mm -hmm. It was it was very. So a hard. client would notice. Oh, absolutely. Was, okay. Absolutely. And so I kind of got through it in cosmetology school because I was majority working with mannequin heads. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, right. I'm getting so much better. Yeah. And I was feeling really good. And then whenever I started with sport clips mm -hmm. and I was your cutting on real people's heads, yeah, uh -huh. that was a well, little so, okay. bit. So on your technical interview, who was, who was your client? Who was your? My client was the manager of Cadoba Next Door. Okay. And. Did you know this guy? No, was it a guy? It was uh, a guy. Okay. All I right. did not know him. Oh boy! So that's right. <laughs> I was thinking it might help. Like, it, let's say you're now married. Let's say it was your husband or, or your fiance or yeah. boyfriend at the time, and you were, had this comfort level that might have helped you at least get through that interview. But so that w had to be nerve wracking. I was definitely hired because of my personality. Okay. <laughs> I was not hired uh -huh. for that haircut. Uh, they actually, we went through the interview and they were like, yeah, this sounds great. Let's have you do a technical right now. Mm -hmm. And so they go next door and, had and you they disclosed, grab the manager. Had you disclosed at all that you kind of have some no. trimmer? Okay. I'll, I didn't tell anybody yeah. that until the National Hub. Uh, what? Yes. Oh, no way. Yes. I don't remember that part. Okay. <laughs> yes. Wow. Um, but yeah, so they ran over and they got the manager from Catova and they sat him in the chair and I was, I mean, I didn't really know what I was doing mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. So they just thought I was nervous. Yeah, okay. They right. didn't really get it. Uh, Did they have to clean his haircut after yes. you were done? Okay. <laughs> it right. was bad. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. But wait, he was oh. so nice, and he let me cut his hair multiple times after okay, that. Okay, all right. So that was a good experience. That's cool. <laughs> uh, all right, so so then, then let's get into your sport clips career. So okay. so first of all, did you have were you, were you ever a cosmetic uh, stylist somewhere else? I was. Okay, another brand or like a full service salon? It was salon? a full service salon. Okay. It was a booth rental place, actually. Mm. That was my first. I'm, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go do this. Uh, I remember sitting around a lot. Yeah. Um, I remember being really broke. And... They don't tell you that part in yeah, the school, right? I didn't right? really have the money to go out and do any kind mm. of marketing. I was living in kind of a rundown apartment. Mm. I was working two other jobs. I was a server and a bartender at El Chico's Mexican mm. restaurant. Um, and... It, I didn't feel like I was going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I actually got to the point after, it was almost a year, I decided I, I don't think cosmetology is gonna work for me. Oh, wow. And a friend that I went through cosmetology school with actually came up to me and said, there's this new place, because Sport Clips had just opened. Mm -hmm. In where, what town? In Lawton, uh, okay. Oklahoma. And she said, there's this new place, you gotta come check it out. And so I Google Sport Clips, mm -hmm. and what I found was not very mm -hmm. good. Well, you, did you Google or Yelp it? I that's Googled the, it. That's their question. I okay. Googled it, and uh, there was an article written by a military wife in Lawton, Oklahoma, about what she thought Sport Clips was. Mm -hmm. Had never been there, mm -hmm. but she kind of oh. wrote a negative oh. thing about it. And my mind at the time, okay, that's what it is. Yeah. You know, so I actually avoided this girl for months because I couldn't believe she worked in a place like that. And then she, you know. Oh, the, the, so the friend that recommended it. Yes. Actually, I didn't catch that. She worked at the sports She place. did, oh, she worked okay. there. Okay. And I avoided her right. for months. Okay. Are we allowed to say her name or? Uh, yeah. Okay. Her name's Anna. Anna. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't know if she's still with Sport Clips or not, but hi, Anna. I hope you're listening hi, to your Anna. friend, Brittany. <laughs> okay. Um, and so I kind of avoided her for a long time. And then finally, of course, we're in a small town. Yeah. We're going to run into each other mm -hmm. at some point. And she was like, where did you go? What have you been doing? And I was like, you know what? Yeah. This has got to be better than what I'm currently in, mm -hmm. this position I'm in. So I'll just go try it out. What's and the I'm, worst that I have to always ask my kids? What's the worst that yeah. can happen? At least go yes. for it. At least try it out. Yeah. So I walked in the store and it was like, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was not what I expected. The team was really nice. The manager was really nice. Who's the, who was the team leader of that store? At uh, the time? David Kelly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he still is. All right. Cool. He's still there. Um, and I was just I was blown away by it. And I thought, you know, I could I could make some money mm -hmm. here, and then I'll figure out what I want to do later. My intentions was not to stay at Sport Clips okay. when I. It was a stepping stone yes. into something else. Yeah. Yes, I just needed to make some money. Right. Um, and it was it was real scary. I didn't really feel confident with men's haircuts at mm -hmm. all. Because, I mean, the full service, had you really done any men's hair, None. to be honest? No. Okay. So, um, all right. Uh, I, would, I love asking this question. You, usually it's of someone that comes straight from uh, cosmetology school, and like an OG, you know, mm -hmm. that gets and then hired by a sport clips. So, all right. Do you remember your first men's haircut? Yes. At a sport clips. At a sport clips, yes. Yeah. Okay. How, um, uh, not so, including my technical. No, no. I, yes. Yeah, that one we already got. Yes. But but he he kind of knew he was a guinea pig at least for your interview. But the client that sat down in the chair that day mm -hmm. probably didn't know he was a guinea pig, right? right? So tell me, give just walk me through. Do you remember everything about it or? I is, do. Okay. Yes. Tell me. Good. That's what I want to know. Um. Okay, so it was um, just me and one other person in the store. Okay, is it the manager? Or it was the manager. The manager. Okay. All right. And she told me, you're going to take the next client that walks in. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. All right. And it was a slower store at the time. It was yeah. brand new, yeah. you know. Um, and so right as the door dings, the phone rings. And the manager okay. has to step into the office and take a phone call. Oh, Lordy. Okay. And the guy comes in, and he has, like, super, super curly hair. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, and he sits down, and I'm like, so what you want, right. you know? And he's a like... A buzz cut, please, yeah. please, he's number like, one? He's like, I want a zero fade, okay. medium. Um, and I'm like, okay, yeah. got it. And so I'm just like, I'll fake it till I make it, whatever. Right. And I start, you know, sticking guards on my clippers, and he's like, aren't you going to ask me if I want to go with the green or against the green? And I'm like... Yeah, um, hold on just a second. Mm -hmm. So I walk in the office and she's still on the phone and I'm like, what does a with the grain or against no. the grain mean? And she just, her eyes get huge and she's like, Had you already on. started cutting? No. Oh, okay, okay. No, and her eyes just get huge and she's like, hold on. Mm -hmm. 
And so she finishes her phone call and she comes out. She actually does the haircut and okay. part of it. And then yeah. I helped. But right. that was really my first haircut yeah. experience. Yeah. It was, and then the next one was a high and tight. Okay. Yeah. So you're getting literally baptized by fire. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. now, the reason I, I love finding that kind of stuff out is because, and I, I said this in te uh, Team Leader Training Camp 2 today, is why, it's why I love stylists so much as a, as a you know, profession and person, personality group, really, is because really what other professions on your first day, like, are you faced with immediate reaction to whether you do a good job or not? Like... Uh -huh. It's stylus is really the only one I can think of. I mean, I'm in marketing. Like, I didn't know my first day. If I had a bad day that day, eh, what are the what are the ramifications? No one. But if you have a like your the client sits in your chair for the first time and has had a bad haircut because you were nervous and didn't know what you were doing, on you're gonna know it oh, yeah. and they're gonna let you know it. Um, and so, as I feel like as a people group, stylists are just some of the bravest, most courageous oh, souls yes. in the world, right? Because they're they're going through this. They face you probably, you probably remember uh, not that one and not the technical interview. Do you remember your worst haircut ever that you gave? I mean, that high and tight was pretty bad. Okay, the high. So the second one was <laughs> yeah. pretty bad. Okay, so here's so here's my follow on question that I like and sometimes when I visit a store I'll, I'll talk to some team members about this but okay you had that high and tight you didn't think you did a good job um, I don't know if the client let you know you didn't do a good job or not uh, or, yeah. okay all right good <laughs> perfect that's why that's why I went out. how did you get through that like how do you pick yourself up and keep going and not like I mean me I've run into the bathroom crying my eyes out um, I'm 43 years old, and I'd probably still react that way. So how how do you how do you make it through a moment like that? You know, I'll be 100% honest. I didn't make it through. Mm -hmm. I another stylist in the store, um, Lori. Uh, she was the assistant manager at the time, and she was with me, and yeah. she was the one who pushed me through. Mm -hmm. So it was one of those moments where I was like, I need to leave. Right. I'm never gonna get good. And she was so encouraging. She That's helped great. me fix the haircut. Yeah thankfully, mm -hmm. the best she could. Mm -hmm. And uh, she just said, no, I, I was there. I was in your position. Mm -hmm. You've got this. This is what we're going to do next time. And it was just, that was what got me through wow. that moment. Is Lori still there? Where is she? I, you know, I'm not sure. Well, let's look Lori up. Yeah, and we need she's to look Lori up. Where's she give, at? We got to give her a <laughs> do it with passion yes, shirt or something. So, but that's why I love finding that out because yeah, you either have that I don't, you, your personality type is end a resolve. I'm going to do it. No one's going to, I'm, I'm going to get better. Or hopefully you have at least a, a team around you mm -hmm. who's going to go, come on, girl, you got yeah. this. Let's go pick yourself up. It's not always going to be like this. You're going to get better. Um, so I like finding that kind of stuff out. Okay. So you, you, you go through um, some bad haircuts uh, and you learn how to cut men's hair. Kind of when do you feel like you hit your groove and hit your stride? Well... Four months after I started as a stylist, I was offered the manager's position. Oh, okay. So that was the moment when I decided... Mm -hmm. I think I got this. I got this. Yeah. Um, I actually kind of... I feel like I kind of bullied the team leader into letting me mm -hmm. have the manager's position or letting me interview for it, and he laughs about this now. Mm. Um, but I there was a couple of other girls that had been there since day one that wanted to interview for it, and I didn't feel like it was my place. But then something happened to where I kind of thought, you know what? I think I could do a good job at this. I'm just going to give it a try. So I was like, please, please, please interview me, mm -hmm. please. And finally he was like, okay. And then he just said, you're it. Like, we're going to do this. Any uh, resentment from the other team members that they didn't get it? And if so, how did you get through that? I think there was in the beginning. I think... I had to build credibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the thing is I was very new and that's why they didn't like the decision, I think, is because, you know, who was I right. coming right in to do something like that? So it took me... Were you younger than most of them? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so it, it took a lot of working very hard to learn as much as I could to have the answers to the questions that they had mm -hmm. so that I could say, you know, I, I am good at this. I can do this. I do know the same things, you know, and it, it took a year for me to actually get in that time and position of being in management where my team actually looked up to me and respected me and, you know, to build that. Uh, at what point did you uh, arrive and the, the trimmers thing, the, the practice and all that and talking, when did that, when were you really, when did you 
kind of get over that hurdle and you felt like it's not an issue anymore? Well, um, I think it's always been an issue. Mm -hmm. I think I've just kind of worked past it. But I, ma I, I imagine you used to be yeah, like self-conscious about it right. and think that maybe other people are catching on. So as a stylist, I think I got through it within a year okay. of cutting consistently. Mm -hmm. Um, as a manager, when I started doing demos at cosmetology schools, it came back okay. because now people are watching mm -hmm. and there's different things, you know, that uh, people are observing that made me very nervous. Mm -hmm. so, About how long you're managing the store uh, pretty quickly. Uh, how long before you kind of transition into, I mean, because you're a coach. Yes. Uh, so give me kind of give me that timeline. So um, it was about three years after I had started managing, I had ha had coaches come into my stores to do success checks and I really wanted to do that one day. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that day was any time soon. And wh why, why did you want, what was appealing about it? I think just the idea of moving up, but also educating because one of my favorite things as a manager was developing team members and going into the cosmetology schools. Mm -hmm. Those were my two favorite things. And so I thought, that's what a coach does. I yep. didn't know all the other stuff coaches <laughs> right, right, did. Right. <laughs> that was a surprise, but no, I really wanted to do that. And it just so happened that one of the coaches came in for a success check one day, and I felt like I needed to talk to her about it. And so I asked her, you know, what kind of steps do I need to take for me to one day be in the position to be considered for a position mm -hmm. like you have. And she said, well, we're taking applications right now. How funny that wow. you asked. Wow. It was amazing. And did they not usually publicize that or? Yes, they did. I okay. just, I, it wasn't out yet. Okay. And um, right. so it was definitely a crazy thing. And my store was kind of all by itself. So you have the Dallas-Fort Worth area kind of clustered, and then it was like Lawton, Oklahoma is the only store in Oklahoma that was within our market. Okay. So I didn't really have a whole lot of connection with anybody in the Dallas area, but they asked me to come in for an interview. So I drove to Dallas. And, Which is how far away? Uh, it was about uh, three and a half hours okay. or so. And I drove into Dallas for this interview. And with who? Who's, who's Mark and Jan Mansfield okay. and then Jenny Smith. All right. Oh my gosh. And she you was were just in the thick of it. Yes. And she was super pregnant at the uh, time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, emotions. Yeah. She has emotions. Yes. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so it was at their house. And I got there, and they had, like, as soon as I walked through the door, there's all these dogs Yeah, like, I was getting ready to say, the dogs attack you? Uh-huh. And immediately, I'm like, I love these people, because mm -hmm. I'm a huge dog person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, they take me back into their, you know, back room and this little yeah. table, and we all sit at this table. And Mark has a way, Mark is the funniest best guy so nice and just you don't wonderful. have to say that you no, can tell the really truth is. for now he really is. Right, but right. he's also he tries to scare people mm -hmm. and he messes with people a yeah. whole lot and so he was asking me questions so seriously that i was just yeah. shaking he was like, giving you he was he trying to access that tremor side of you <laughs> yes right? he, you was, he was he was um and one of the questions i remember him asking was you know, if you were to get this position, you know you'd be moving to Dallas. Mm -hmm. Do you know anybody here? And I didn't. I didn't know anybody yeah. in Texas. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And Had I, you known that was going to be a requirement? Yes, I okay, did. Okay. I did. Uh, but I think when I answered, I was so worried that that would be like, oh, she's not going to be able to handle this. Mm -hmm. We're not going to hire her. Coming to the big and, city. And, right. Oh, yeah. So I left and I called my grandma and I was almost in tears. And I was like, I did a horrible job. Mm -hmm. It was a horrible interview. I sucked yeah. the whole thing. Right. And she's like, it's fine. Now you don't have to move to Dallas. Uh -huh. Right. Because she didn't want me to right. move. And uh, so I get back and then Jenny calls me and she says, we would like you to come back for a follow up interview after leadership. And leadership was in Dallas. So I drove to Dallas for leadership. And then afterwards, we went to Jake's Burgers, which is my favorite restaurant now because of what happened next. Okay. okay. And we're all sitting there and they start ans asking me these intense questions again. I'm answering the whole time, having like sesame seeds from the buns oh, all on my teeth. Awesome, yeah. I'm like, this is going even better than the mm -hmm. first interview. 
And then uh, Mark and Jan said, well, let, let's walk you outside your car and you can get on the road. And I was like, okay, it's over. And we go out there and they offer me the position standing at my car. Mm -hmm. Jan cried and hugged me. Does she even really know you at no, that point? No, but I just, she's just... She's a little softy. I know, you know it. And I, I am a crier, uh -huh. but I was so in shock that emotion wasn't happening. I was just like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> like when you get in a car accident, your ears are ringing. You're not yes. really sure what's happening. It's one of those. It was a really intense moment because I just got offered my dream job. Yeah. I was going to be moving to Dallas and I basically just got in my car and drove three hours home by myself, mm -hmm. just in my own thoughts. Right. Like, Do you even remember the trip home? You I know, really like don't. you just arrived. I it's called like, a, a lot of people yeah. on my yeah. way home to tell them, but uh, it, it, it all happened very quickly. They, they basically said, well, we'll have you move here in two weeks, mm -hmm. you know, let's, let's get going. And so I did, I packed up my two dogs. Was it just one coach or were they hiring for a couple oh, other, it was just, just that just one me, spot? Yes. Okay. Um, and I, I moved with my two little dogs in two weeks. I had to get a new car cause I was driving a Camaro and you cannot fit anything in a Camaro. Mm -hmm. So I got a little Nissan Juke, which I still have and love. Um, I had to get a new cell phone because my phone carrier didn't exist anywhere outside of, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh, it didn't exist in Texas. And, um, I had to find a place to live mm -hmm. and it was a lot. Had you been dating yet? I was. Your now husband? No. Okay, good. Oh, that makes it an even better story. Okay. So, all right. So, boom. Uh, you leave uh, Oklahoma for the big city and the biggest, the big state of Texas and you come to Dallas with your two dogs mm -hmm. and you get set up. What year is this? 2016. 2016. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then you hit the ground running. You're the best coach. It's the easiest thing you've ever done, right? <laughs> no, what, what happened <laughs> as you transition? Um, so, you know, getting up in front of people, doing mm -hmm. haircuts, doing those things, brought those trimmers back. But again, I never told anybody about mm -hmm. it. So I was the whole time trying to hide this about myself. Um, presenting was very challenging for me in the mm -hmm. beginning which is crazy now, yeah. um, but it was very challenging. And I remember my it very just first- Just to large groups or just even to anybody. a class full of- Oh, you know, anybody, five. anything more than 10 people, okay. I wasn't doing it. Okay. It was, yeah. Uh, but I are, remember- Are you getting, are you giving excuses? Like I can't do this one or- No, I did it. power through it. It was- <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, I remember my first training class, I only had one person. The mm -hmm. first one I did by myself. Mm -hmm. I only had one person in the training class, and so that kind of made me feel at ease. Yeah. And I start talking and then I finish. And I'm like, yeah, you get it? Mm -hmm. And she says, well, you just did the whole class in 15 minutes. So can you go back and say everything you just said again? Cause I didn't get any of that. Okay. I was so nervous right. that I was just like, oh. You plowed through it. Okay. Yes. And uh, that was kind of a down moment for yeah. me. I was like, oh, I'm not good at this. And how, it, how quickly was that? Was that the first couple months you said? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. And um, so yet again, here you are having to kind of go in the mirror, look yourself in the mirror mm -hmm. and I, I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. Gosh darn it. I can do this kind of thing and, and talk yourself through it. Yeah. yeah. My first year as a coach was kind of a blur. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of it's learning. like that drive back to Oklahoma. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was a lot of learning, a lot of messing up mm -hmm. and a lot of just trying to figure out where my place was on the team. Mm -hmm. And by year two, I was like, I basically became this yes girl because I realized that if I wanted to get better again, I had to practice, I had to take on more responsibilities. And so everything that was thrown out on the table, who's gonna do this? I'm gonna do it, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. And um, that was how I got my position as the ambassador lead. Okay. So who wants to do this? I was right. all about it. Okay. And Any chance to volunteer for some yes. extra challenge? And I, I felt like that, that helped me get better mm -hmm. at everything because the more I took on, the more I was able to, you know, learn from that, those things. And, and the confidence too, they, the like confidence, it's, it's building yes. confidence along the way that I've done yes. it before and I can do it again and uh, repetition through that. I love it. Okay. And it got to the point where after that second year, I was basically told in my, we do yearly uh, reviews yeah. and I was told in my review, Brittany, at the beginning of this year, we told you that you were taking on too much and we were worried that you were gonna leave because you were gonna get burnt out. Mm -hmm. And we, we thought you had too much on your plate. 
but now we realize you don't have a plate, you have a platter, so you're good. No, We're just cool. gonna keep giving like you stuff. That. Yeah. And it was Jenny that had told me that, mm -hmm. and I've used that ever since because yeah. I really do. I I am motivated by responsibility and getting to do more, and I just feel like it's made me. I love that because I there's some people that are listening to this that are going, yep, that's me. Uh -huh. And other people are like, you're crazy. Right. That is the last. I don't want another thing mm -hmm. that be added to my plate. Mm -hmm. So that's great for you. But um, so, all right. So around year two is kind of when you felt like you hit your mm -hmm. stride. As it, when uh, And when did the artistic team happen? So year two. Okay. Well, so the be at the end of my first year, mm -hmm. uh, I actually had Mark was trying to talk me into applying for the artistic mm -hmm. team. And I didn't mention this. I actually didn't. I, that was you the didn't one apply? thing. Yeah, that okay. was the one thing oh, I said okay. no to. Yeah. Why? I didn't feel ready. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I I do jump into things when I'm not ready sometimes. But this was a really big thing. Yeah, that everybody and, would see. Right, and, right. and the whole trimmers thing. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, if I get up on stage in front of all these people, I had seen the artistic team. I knew what yes. they did. And I there's said, no hiding. There's no stage. hiding. Everybody's yeah. going to see me shaking and they're going to, you know, judge me for it. I just felt uncomfortable doing that. And literally after the artistic team was announced for that year, I immediately regretted my decision. And I thought, wow. oh, I really wanted to do this. Why mm -hmm. didn't I do this? And so all year I basically just thought about it and prepared for it. Mm -hmm. And so whenever it was time to apply, I was like, I'm ready, here mm -hmm. I go, you know. And it, Did Mark even have to ask you again? No. Or, okay. <laughs> no. And uh, so I applied and um, when they announced that I would be on the artistic team, it was like I was excited, but I was going right back to the Yes, oh, oh no, I'm sure it's that mix <laughs> Was it at a coach's huddle? Yes. Is that when you found, found mm -hmm. out? And um, uh, so as they're bringing you up in front of everybody, is it like literally right then and they're hitting you like, oh, holy moly, I'm gonna, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's back mm -hmm. and I'm gonna have to overcome this thing yet again, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so what, this is 2017? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah. 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 Or 2018. 2018. Yeah, I guess. yeah, yeah. Okay. Because this is your second year. 2017, but I started in 2018. Okay, got yeah. it. Okay. Um, and uh, I, what I'm really interested in, because I, I uh, one of my favorite parts about the job is I get to visit all these stores uh, around the country, probably about two to three hundred stores a year, and I like to bring a gift to the managers, yeah. right, and the team members too. But the managers get the special gift, and it's always the shirt from Huddle. Uh, so a couple years ago, it was the Retro Sport Clips one, if you remember that one. Uh, and then this year, we actually, we had another Huddle shirt. It was a double down, it was our theme in Vegas, and it was this great, it's a really cool shirt. But there was one that, did you wear that on stage? I think you did, I did right? Yes. Okay. So let's talk about your. I was the very yes, first person to you, wear the do with the, fashion shirt. And it, not only that, you're the very first person that's had like Gordon's face and cowboy hat have been on a shirt. Yours the first name uh, oh, to be yeah. on a sport clip shirt. So that's pretty cool. So tell me about. Obviously, it was uh, it was your speech. The do it with passion or don't do it all. It's the, now the shirt that's kind of taken the nation by storm, and it's the only way to get it's through a store visit or you do something kind of crazy and cool and, um, and all that kind of stuff. But tell me about the theme, where the phrase came from, a, a little bit about the motivation behind it. So, um, kind of a sad thing, I did not make up this quote. Yeah, that's fine. I, the beginning of 2018, I decided that I needed a powerful quote yep. to put on my laptop screen to remind me every single day that I needed to be better and do mm -hmm. better and take on more things. And so the quote that I chose was do it with passion or don't do it at all. Yep. So every day for a year, I saw that quote pop up on my computer screen and it actually made a huge impact in my life mm -hmm. because there were lots of dates that I opened up my computer and I'm like, oh, I got all this awful work to do. And then I see this quote and I'm like, no, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do it right. And it just, it made a huge difference. And um, Julie actually Julie sent out, Vargas. Julie Vargas, okay. she sent out an email to all the artistic team members and she said, we're thinking about maybe having one of you come up on stage and do, you know, be one of the keynote speakers. Yep. For whatever reason at the time, I did not realize what she meant by keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. I thought she meant like breakout speaker. Oh, okay, got it. I don't mm -hmm. know, know if she even knows this. Yep. 
Um, and she was like, yeah, you know, just, just submit your story, write something down. And so I did not turn mine in until the very last day it was due at mm -hmm. 10 o'clock at night because I was like, oh no, I didn't do this. And I just, you know, right. wrote it up and I sent it in. And then I was uh, teaching a training class one day and it was lunchtime and I got a voicemail from Jan. Uh, Mansfield and she doesn't call me a whole lot so mm -hmm. when I get a voicemail I'm like oh what did I do yep. which I never do anything wrong no, right. that's Let's just be my honest. mentality mm -hmm. um, but so I listen to the voicemail and she's like Brittany oh my goodness call me and I'm like that was it oh my mm -hmm. gosh well I couldn't do anything about it at that point I had to finish my training class mm -hmm. but I'm looking at my phone and there's all these notifications and all these things going on and I'm like something's happening but I gotta finish this training class so I finish it and then before I call Jan, because I'm scared to call Jan, I look at Facebook, because that's gonna calm yep. me down, right? And the first thing I see is a picture of me next to Kelly Cardenas, like keynote, oh, the three yes. keynote speakers Mel from Robbins. the National yep. Huddle. Uh -huh. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? Mm -hmm. And then I call Jan, and she's like, how exciting, you know, this is awesome. And I was just in complete shock. Yes. And my anxiety set in super bad. Mm -hmm. I called my grandma, because I call her when something's wrong. Mm -hmm not to help me in any way shape or form she just shares anxiety with me oh, okay so she's yep. i'm like oh my gosh i'm gonna be talking in front of thousands of people and she's like oh my gosh this was a terrible idea <laughs> and i'm like yeah it was <laughs> and so we go through this whole conversation and what's your you call her grandma or what do you call I her i call her kk kk all right kk okay. that was awesome all yes right. um so we're just freaking out together and this i found out i guess in october november the huddles in april yes I got married in February. Uh -huh. So this whole in-between time, including my wedding, I am like pit in my oh, stomach yeah. every single day to mm -hmm. the point where on the way to Jamaica for my wedding, my husband says, if you talk about that huddle speech <laughs> one time, uh -huh. this wedding isn't happening. Uh -huh. And... Um, you should have you should have just kept talking about it, see if he was really going to go through with it. I, I yeah, bet he still would have. But. Well, you know. Uh, so... Anyway, so this whole time, just pit in my stomach, and yeah. everybody's like, are you nervous? I'm like, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. nervous. And they're like, oh, you'll do it fine. It'll mm -hmm. be fine. And um, They have no idea. They have no idea no. what I'm talking about. No, and the fact of what <laughs> it's like to be on that stage. Oh, so, yeah. so you were – I don't want to scare anybody. I mean, God forbid. But you had every right to be nervous. I mean, that's a I big was. audience. It's – they're going to be hanging on your every word. The fact that you are a stylist turned manager turned coach, artistic team member, and you're this great success story, but they can, you know, you're relatable. And so you're representing them. Mm -hmm. Like all the managers that are there, you're representing them, uh, thousands of them. So uh, you make it. So you, you obviously you got married. I did. Uh, okay. I got married. <laughs> uh, so you, you must have stopped talking about it at least for a, a week or two. I did. Um, and then you hit the ground running coming back. Yeah. Uh, did you? I assume you honeymooned in Jamaica and everything. We did, You guys yes. stayed out there? Okay. So uh, you come back. I mean, you. if I remember right, you weren't referring to notes and you weren't reading anything off. Or maybe you were, and you were so good at it that I didn't, I didn't see it. So... I practiced yes. uh, once before I got up there and spoke, and I did have a teleprompter. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the guys at the huddle, I cannot remember his name, but he was kind of making sure all the sound was working Michael? and everything. I yes. think so, uh -huh. yes. And um, he said, the only it was great. The only advice I would give you is uh, just make sure that you keep your head up so it doesn't look like you're reading your notes. Yeah. Um, so a side story about how I actually got the confidence to go out on stage. Okay. Kelly Cardenas. Yes. Um, he's a big part of it. So I almost threw up mm -hmm. that morning. Mm -hmm. Like I was just, how in the world am I going to do this? This is not going to work. Yeah. I'm going to, something bad's going to happen. Well, okay. Asterisk. Plus, you guys had performances uh, as the artistic team yeah. that you're pr you're having to learn and practice yes. and, and all that with the dancers and all these other models, I mean. So you had all of that plus the biggest moment of your career, of anybody's yes. career, really, yeah. um, going through. So I just wanted to throw that extra layer yes, of a uh, a, yeah, <laughs> a challenge that you had going yeah. on. Okay. Um, and so I go backstage 
And I go back there early, of course, and Kelly Cardenas is back there because he's speaking after me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he has a posse that kind of oh, travels with him. Oh, yeah, he's got him. that guy that videos yeah. him. And, so oh, he yeah, has this uh -huh. whole group of people with him, and uh, we're kind of watching on the screen, and I'm just sitting at a table by myself just freaking out, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rocking back and forth. And uh, Kelly says, hey, Brittany, can you come over here for a second? And I said, okay, yeah. and then I get even more nervous. Yeah. And he's like, you're about to speak, right? And I said, yes. And he said, have you ever spoken in front of this many people before? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. And I'm so nervous. And he said, okay, let's get up real quick. Mm -hmm. And so he got his whole posse up and he says, let's hold hands. Yeah. And he just started praying for yeah. me. Uh -huh. And it, the, it was what he said. He said, give her the strength to get her message across. Mm -hmm. Give her the strength to do what she's here to do and ha let her have purpose. And it was that that got to me because this whole, I mean, months and months and months, I was nervous because of me. Mm -hmm. I was nervous because, oh, what will they think of me? All the focus. Uh, what, and yeah. like, you know, and when he said that, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. I'm doing this to share my story, to help other people. I want to get a message across. So I'm not going to think about me. I'm just going to get up there and I'm going to do it. Yeah. And they called my name. Um, the guy forgot to mic me. So I was getting my mic put oh, like wow. all over me as I'm running mm -hmm. up the stairs. Mm -hmm. So that adds a little bit. Yeah, of oh, for sure. But as soon as I got out there, it was gone. Yep. And wow. I started talking and I didn't look at that teleprompter once. Oh, wow. I just, I knew I, what I wanted yeah. to say. I said it. I didn't plan on crying. Mm -hmm. I had never gotten emotional doing that speech and the millions of times I practiced it. I, I think you were sensing the energy in the room. Very like, much so. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. There were a lot of tears during that because yeah. everyone is seeing themselves in you and it, their their challenge and the obstacles that they've overcome to succeed in their careers might be a little different than yours, mm -hmm. but they're they're in that. That's what I'm saying. They're relating to you. You are right. them. You are one of them. And so, uh, so Corey, how could you not get caught up in? Um, in the emotion of, of what the room was like. It was so. a very weird thing to cry mm -hmm. on stage in front of that many people. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, it was just emotional. And then when it's, I got- And you're up there by yourself. Like no one oh, can hug you. Oh, and it's you. huge. Yes. The stage is like yes, ginormous. It is. It I is. feel like an ant on the right. stage. And I can only see the faces of the, the people in the very rows. front. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was just, when I started talking about my Sport Clips family mm -hmm. and how they have really pushed me to accomplish all the things I've done, that was really the moment I got really emotional mm -hmm. because I have had so many incredible people um, that have believed in me and that have helped me get to where I am, and I wouldn't be here without yeah. them. And so just the culture of Sport Clips is so incredible to me, and it does make me emotional. Yeah. I'm getting emotional yeah. right now. Um, but it, it, was, it was an incredible experience really scary mm -hmm. but when i got out there and i did it it was i don't remember some of it right but it it's was, the it three was, hour drive back to mm -hmm. oklahoma moment right yes. yet again in your life and honestly the speech itself was not the best part mm -hmm. it was after oh yeah everybody coming up to me and i had so many um instagram messages and facebook messages mm -hmm. hey Brittany, i have this going on in my life and i really you spoke to me and th these are the challenges i have and i really hope to get to where you are at some point and that just that yeah. got me because i'm like i that was my p purpose right. i just needed to lift somebody up and show them that they're not alone well you you're uh you, you still are, but in that moment, you were a lightning rod of inspiration. Like, everyone's looking for, how do we pull ourselves up? How do we get through this? Uh, she's done it, so that's that's our inspiration. That's our hero. That's our model of what, uh, of what we can become. So the do it with passion or don't do it at all uh, moment, and it really, I mean, the echo of it, it's still being felt, right, yeah. in the impact. Uh, you, uh, is it Dane? Dane, Dane, yes. So um, we haven't mentioned Dane by name, um, but we did skip the wedding as her favorite day of the year or whatever, <laughs> favorite moment of the year. Sorry, um, <laughs> and uh, so how about this? Uh, do you have any anything else that you want to add before? I got 10. I've kept you longer than I said I would, and it's late, and I know you're hungry. Yeah, so, I'm a little hungry. Um, <laughs> I, I can hear your stomach growling, basically, is where I'm going with this. But I got 10 kind of fun questions to end it. But is there anything that I haven't asked or touched on that you were kind of hoping to kind of unload on the podcast today? I don't think so. I think you got it all. But I just I, – I hope that everybody – gets the message mm -hmm. I, with the shirts and everything yeah. it's not just about the quote it's about the message you know what, what i, I hope use it 
uh, Brittany, is that they see it's it's not a shtick or uh, it's you. It's who you yeah. really are. And it's not like you're not selling this and um, it's just something you're going through the motions on. But mm-hmm. it really is, is genuine. And so that's that's why I, I, you know, I'm telling you, man, I've been trying to get you all year. So <laughs> I'm so glad. By the way, Kelly's next. Kelly all Cardenas. Right. So we'll, I'll make sure now to tell him uh, what an inspiration yeah. was. And uh, man, maybe he'll pray for me too. It'll I be know. Awesome. Uh, all right. Okay, you ready? So I'm these ready. are the 10 just you know, nonsensical questions. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you an easy one that's going to help correct something. I need you to pick, moving forward, what is your favorite day of, of the 365 days of the year? What is your favorite day of the year? I hope it's in February. Uh, the day that I married my husband, okay. who is full-time sporty, works with sport clips, by the way. Wow, what? Yeah. D- please tell me he showed up in sporty uh, in Jamaica to put that ring on your finger. Because uh, it that was would definitely be... talked about oh, in our wedding photos Lord that we would mercy. do sporty, but it didn't happen. Yeah, well, it's kind of Let, tough to pack it that is. big old thing and it the is. battery pack and everything. Who knows if the if the conversion on the electricity and everything yeah. went over there work. All right, so what is it? February what? February 10th. Are you sure about that? Let me edit that out because there was a question mark. February 10th is your is your anniversary. I think so. Okay, all right. Okay. Well, okay, it got changed. So I think oh, it's February what? 10th. What? My wedding got moved today. Oh, okay, all right. So because was I, there a hurricane or something coming? Or? No, part of my family missed their flights. Oh, okay, all yeah. right. So <laughs> what, what do you count it as? What, what's the day? February 10th? February 10th. Okay, all right, good. I'm going to go with it. Um, <laughs> all right, another nonsensical question. But, um, give me the last concert that you went to. Who'd you go see? Um, the last concert that I went to, I guess. Oh my gosh, I haven't been to a concert in a long time. Uh, I think I saw Katy Perry. Really? Ooh, yeah. Nice. Oh, was this in Vegas or like? Uh, no. Okay. It was just somewhere in, in Dallas Oklahoma. Or Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma. Okay. I saw Katy Perry. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, if you could visit, well, you already been to Jamaica. If you could visit anywhere in the world, where would you go? Where Paris. else? Paris? Paris. You've never been? I've never been. Okay. Awesome. You hear that, Dane? Yeah. Take this Take woman to, to Paris. Paris. <laughs> Come on. Uh, give me a, a, a noise or sound that you love to hear. Woohoo! You like that? That's, <laughs> that's, your, that's your, your go to. I actually, like, I'd say that every, every all the time. Okay. If you say something positive, I okay. immediately that's call what, it woohoo! Okay. Because you love to hear You love to hear yourself. I love to hear myself okay. say woohoo! Okay. All right. Then, next question What's the noise or sound that you hate to hear? Eh. <laughs> Just like, a, like on a wrong answer or? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. All right. That sounds so negative. Okay. I like it. I, 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 these are two that I've never heard before on these questions. Uh, well, this one for you, oh, maybe maybe it's something I haven't you know gotten an answer from yet, but what is the bravest thing you've ever done? I think getting up on that okay. stage. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I would agree knowing this much of your story, but in case mm-hmm. there was something else. Yeah. Uh, and again, for anyone that's never been on that stage, what you did, I'm telling you, it's it's so beyond being next level. It's in its own orbit. Uh, okay, now, a couple questions. When they make a movie based on the story of your life, what actress do you hope plays the lead character, you? Who's that... Uh... The redheaded girl that's really crazy, and she's in that one movie. It's not Amy Adams, but it's a girl that looks like her. And she's like, "You can yeah. run, but I will find you." Yeah. Yes. You know? Yes. Okay. Her. You like her? I, okay. I think. Do you I want her to my... to dye her hair to dirty blonde, or uh, you would know, you roll with the redhead? I, I, she was... I roll okay. with it. I okay. mean, she just. I, I yeah. Okay. Feel her vibe. I know, I know the crazy <laughs> one that you're talking about. She's like in Wedding Crashers and yes. all those kind of movies. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, in that movie, what's what are they gonna? What's the title of it gonna be? I mean, yes. do it with passion. Yeah, okay, I like it. it. Yes, oh, I like it. Or Julie's version of it. Okay. Do it with passion or else. Oh, okay. She said yes. that at Coach's Huddle. Okay. okay. On accident. I like that. Well, but that, it'd be a shortened, <laughs> yeah, just good yeah. because that, do it passion or don't do it all. That might not fit like in a movie poster, but yeah. or else. Would. Or else. Okay. <laughs> uh, two more questions. With the movie, who is the, who is the band that's going to be, or the musician that's going to be playing the soundtrack for your movie? Can it be somebody no longer living? Yes. We can just grab music from their their library. I might change my mind. It needs to be like a good, powerful. Okay. Uh-huh. Let, let's just go with Journey. 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 Yeah. Okay. Journey. Don't stop Don't believing. Stop oh, believing. heck yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> uh, that's definitely going to be playing during the opening credits. Uh, all right. 
And if heaven indeed exists, what do you hope to hear God say when you enter the pearly gates? You made an impact on other people's lives. Oh, you certainly have, not just from Huddle. That was a, a certainly a wonderful moment, but the day-to-day -day stuff. Huddle's once-in-a-lifetime kind of yeah. thing. But the stuff you're doing every day to make an impact is definitely paying off. So uh, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. And hey, thanks everybody for tuning in. And uh, this is going to be uh, an, an episode uh, that I think we're going to cherish forever. So appreciate you. And uh, we'll have another episode next week. Thanks again.